Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a miracle. And when Terry was talking about each one of the ministries, we're just a bunch of miracles up in here on a Tuesday night, worshiping Jesus. Amen? Yeah. And when Terry brought up that scripture about Lazarus, one of the things I'm so grateful for these last 15 years that today I'm the one who says, take her grave clothes off. I'm calling her out, take her grave clothes off. And that's what we're supposed to do for one another. I myself crawled through the door of the potter's house 15 years ago. I was just a absolutely mess. Um, tonight we're going to talk about the potter's house, but you've kind of got to know um, what the potter's house is. Um, when I crawled through the door, um, I knew I could get sober, but I couldn't get changed. And I had 26 years of living on the street as a homeless woman, a crack addict prostitute. I left my family, been gone 26 years, it kind of me out as dead, blah, 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 31 arrests. And just I had become, my abnormal had become my normal. I'm dead inside, you're just a dead girl walking. And I never dreamed when I crossed over the doorway at the Potter's house, I was 44, and death looked really good to me. It was death that I wanted to do. Uh, and then whenever I crossed the door, a friend of mine, it's just a, just a miraculous story, but there was a woman there named Sheree Birdshaw. She's the founder of the Potter's House. And, again, and Ms. Sheree couldn't be here tonight because last year she lost her husband after 58 years to COVID. And so she's doing amazing and teaching group and running the Potter's House, but she just doesn't like to get out a lot at night. So anyway, um, she was just a little old church lady who started going to the jails and ministering to women like me. And whenever she went into the jails, and she thought to herself, she said, if I could just take them to church, if I could just get them to Jesus. And she loved teaching the Word of God. So her mom died and left her inheritance, and she was married to Mr. Errol, who was an agnostic, and he gave her a really hard time about serving the Lord. And when her mom died, he said, well, why don't you just buy a house for the women you always going to see? And she said, you know what? I think I will. Now, you have to remember, if you come from where I came from and these girls came from, from a woman who's never lived like I've lived or you've lived, to use her inheritance to invest in women like me and you, Jess. I'm telling you, that's somebody that was a grave taker off, right? Yeah. Amen. So anyway, she bought the first house. And um, as anything is, when she first started, it was kind of rocky. And then she realized that she needed a house mom. And then she went from one house. And God, she was never intended to have a father's house. She just wanted to have women when they got out of jail. But God had plans for her. And God knew he had plans for all of us. How many graduates are in the house? Stand up. <laughs> Since that day, she's, uh, we're now in our third home, third or fourth house. We're in Jackson, Georgia. And the Potter's House is a seven-month discipleship program. When I came through the door, there was this glowing white-haired woman that taught the Word of God so hard and so aggressively, and she believed what she was saying, and she scared me to death. And she was like, you know, Jesus might come today. Aren't you, aren't you ready? Aren't you glad? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I've not seen my, my son yet. <laughs> and she was so excited about the Lord, and it, but you know, there was something about her and the way she taught the Word of God. And you know, many, many years I was in and out of jails and prisons and recovery centers, but it was Jesus we needed. He was the circle that fit the circle. We kept trying to put squares in the circle and numbing it with drugs and men and just crazy lifestyles. And you know, today, you know, the Word of God says you're a new creation in Christ. 
Old things have passed away. That was my first scripture. All I could do was stand on it because I really didn't believe it because my past was so, so bad. But you know today I can sit here and I love that song, Cut Off from Friends. Cut Off from Friends. When you come in to, and come to know the Lord and you want your life turned around, cut off those. You've got, you got to turn it all. You've got to let it all go. You're a new creation. All things are passed away. All things have become new. So you don't put old in new. You put new in new. Amen. So as when I came in, uh, as I stepped in the daughter's house, and like I said, it's a seven-month program, and I that was in 2007. And the one thing I noticed about Miss Sheree, and these girls from the tennis and the graduates, she had really high standards for me. They were about like this. She said, you're going to get up every morning, and you're going to do your hair, and you're going to put your makeup on, and you're going to walk the walk, and I'm going to invest in you, and I'm going to put this word in, and I'm going to teach you this word, and I'm going to love you like crazy, but you're going to get up, and you're going to walk like a lady of God. And you know what I said? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because you know what the key was for me? Submission that led to surrender. I needed to submit to her authority in my life. And then I found the Lord and I surrendered to Him. And to this day, I'm always going to have a thought. Um, when you come in, we get up at 5.45. Maybe I'm kind of, we don't really have a program running up here, so y'all can say I preach a little bit, talk a little bit. <laughs> uh, we get up at 5.45 in the morning. Of course, the first time that she told me that, I was kind of like, God's not awake yet. <laughs> but what she was teaching us is the first hour is spent with the Lord. You know, it was not about going to church, and it was not about, ask, it was about asking the Lord into our hearts and receiving the Lord as our Lord and Savior. But what I missed was the personal relationship. I didn't know I could get with the Lord every morning and get with him here, and he would speak back to me and I could talk to him and he would show me things in his Bible. And when I didn't feel like I was feeling anything, I could just believe his word that was true. And that he saw me out there in my darkness because there was too many times I should have been dead. And he made a way for me to get from point A to point B. And he took me four states over. And he got me to this little place from the neck of the woods called the Father's House for all the women. It was only him. But I didn't know I could really know him like that. I thought I had to be good. But he already knew I wasn't good. But he said, come on anyhow. Come on. We don't have anything. We just have the Word of God. She teaches two to four pretty much every day. I do a group on Wednesday. We have another lady who comes in and teaches spiritual warfare on Fridays. But, you know, it's the Word of God that changes the heart. And it's the obedience of God that applies it to your life. Amen? And so that's what you learn there. And what else? Can y'all think of anything else? And these all are new. Let me tell you. You're probably all nervous because we just had six girls graduate this month. So these are all babies. So say I'm here at Colos. You guys are graduating this month. Yeah, I'm graduating April 23rd. Yeah. I never dreamed that Lord would let me do this. When I talked to the Lord 15 years ago, I never dreamed. 
people suffering when they work at Burger King. <laughs> See, there's nothing wrong with Burger King, now don't get me wrong. But I never dreamed he would use me to help other women. And you know what? He wants to do you that well. All I had to do was get in. Just get in. And let him drive my walk. Just get in. And when he said go, go. And when he said no, no. Sometimes the no is a little hard. I, I eventually did it. So what they also learned to do at the Potter's House is we call it interpretive dance. It's really neat because some of these girls come in from heroin, some alcohol, um, some, you know, all get across the board. It's not the um, separation in it, but um, they start learning interpretive, interpretive dance, which is sign language. It's a, they call it AOS, um, so you can understand. But No strength to fight. 
out of her memory, especially being in front of people. And so I'm standing up there watching her. And I'm going to tell you something. She was so shut down when she came in. She was shut down. And to see her up here, and I just found out, uh, who, who would go do that first one? Do the lead that over the bird? Yeah. So Sunday night, she said, Miss Lisa, I'm going to do the lead. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Look what God can do. Yeah. Um, I'm going to I'm going to um, show them what the potter's house and sounds going to change. And just a minute, I'm going to say I'm going uh, give her testimony because the coolest thing about tonight, Sam is from Lynn Roberts. Yes. And her mom and dad are right there. And I'm sure it was next to the hearts sitting here watching the dog over here. Amen. Um, another thing we do at the Potter's House, um, as you're going through the program, like I said, it's real structured. Um, you, like, you get up, you do chores, you have groups, you, when you get through with your chores, a lot of, they walk three miles a day, every day, um, on, you know, days that permitted, weather permitted. Um, they have to do their hair, their makeup, regardless of if they're going anywhere or not. And the reason why she does it, I didn't like that when I first got there. I'm like, I'm just wasting makeup. And she's like, it's not who you're fixing to say, it's what I want you to say. Because she wanted me to see myself as a new creation. She wanted me to get up and take the initiative to take care of myself. And not just be loud. So her standards were really high. Um, we have a dentist that um, volunteers because it's a lot of times when we come in and we've been out there a long time. Um, we don't take care of our dental hygiene. <coughs> We have a, a beautician. We take a picture of them when they first come in. And uh, because we all look pretty like we've been in the grave with some stinking grave clothes on. And we don't look pretty, that's for sure. And then we have to do, we take a picture. And then before they graduate, we do a photo shoot. And so as they come through, and those who have done really well and showing forth the effort and everything, we all send them to the dentist and um, they help them with their dental needs. We have a beautician that um, does their hair. And then at the end of seven months, they do a photo shoot. It, they, I have seen girls literally stand there and bawl like a baby. I know I did. Because after being out there for 26 years, homeless and on the street and doing the things I did, I never saw myself as a lady. I saw myself as a piece of trash when I came. And I remember looking at that picture just weeping. And I said, is this really me? Is this really me? And she said, yes, that's really me. So let's do the before and afters. We have a little video.
<laughs> you said, you ready? I'm so thankful that God never gave up on us. I'm so thankful that he saved us. You know, dear, there's not one day that I regret receiving Christ as my Lord and Savior. There's not one day. We were talking about it on the way down here, me and the girls, and I said, you know, when I think about all the years I gave to the deception in the lives of the enemy, I mean, that, that scripture, you're a new creation, you don't think the same, you don't want the same, you don't act the same, you're not the same. You're really a new creation. And that word is true. I'm so thankful he redeemed us. He bought us back. As I sit there and look at Jessica and Ginger and all these graduates, they're either in ministry or they're doing something for the Lord. And I'm telling you, God is able if you're if God is willing if you're right. I mean, He's able if you're willing. It's all. I can guarantee the Lord saying that. Come on. I can assure you He wants to do it. This is Sam. Like I said, she's from here. I wanted her to share with it tonight. Um, when she came in, she was <laughs> pretty broken. <girly. laughs> I had to pull her off the ceiling a couple of times. <laughs> but she was, she was really broken. <laughs> and to watch what God's done in her life and um, watch her family be pulled back together and restored. And I just wanted to tell you. God is a God of frustration and healing. That's his promise. Um, I was a drug addict for 15 years. I was on opiates, methamphetamines, you name it. Um, God delivered me from everything. I stand here sober. God is so good. Um, I have soul custody of my daughter. I have two, two defects cases against me. Got my daughter back. So mommy needs to go home April 23rd to the Charlotte Bells. Um, but all that to say that I'm redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lord, and I'm so, so blessed.
that's in these programs and ministries, please stand and stay good. In the name of Jesus, stay good. Sisters, stay good. Whoever's over that program and investing in you, listen to them. I promise I was one of them. I still am. Stay put, sisters. Don't sidestep. Don't let things of distraction come in your view. Invest in yourself. Let the Lord have you. Men, stay put. We need godly men as leaders. We need some real men as godly men. These kids, they need fathers. Y'all stay good. There is nothing more beautiful to me than a godly man. I'm serious. Stay good. Serve the Lord. No dipping in God. Do it the right way. And if you're out there struggling, come on in. Come on. It's your own your first love. Come on, on, he's waiting. When the prodigal son was coming down the hill, he didn't have to say, Father, his daddy was already looking. And he ran to him. Come on, home. Surrender. Come get one of these flags. Get one of these flags.